And welcome everyone to this Ex Libris training session, becoming an expert in Leganto. I am Kevin Lane Cummings. I'm a training services consultant with Ex Libris, now part of Pro, uh, also part of ProQuest and part of Clarivate. Uh, also on the line is Jesse Ransom, the teaching and learning product specialist uh, specializing in Leganto. And today's session, session number six, actionable analytics. Uh, today, we're going to learn about how to get analytics on Leganto usage at your institution and the actions that you can take with that information. This is the sixth session in our series, the last session in our Become an Expert series. Uh, if you missed any of the previous sessions, there are uh, recordings of them as well as the, um, the presentation slides like we're seeing here. And those are available in the Knowledge Center, the Ex Libris Knowledge Center. If you go to the Leganto area and then kind of dig down to the, the trainings uh, page and then the webinars page, and then to become an expert at Leganto page, uh, so all the previous recordings and uh, these presentation slides, you're welcome to look for them. And in fact, it's gonna be a really good idea to go there Hopefully you have been there because that's probably where you're registered for today's session. And the reason it's important uh, to go there, maybe right after today's session, if you didn't already download today's presentation slides that we're looking at here, it's gonna be really helpful because there's uh, several places where I have links to other documents. And I also have descriptions on how to find a lot of these analytics in the uh, Alma Analytics tool. And it can be very, complex to find that and I don't want to make you write them all down as we're sitting here talking so just going to this uh, to this knowledge center page and grabbing these presentation slides will speed that up a lot okay here is our agenda for today first I'm going to give you a brief overview of Leganto analytics including the kinds of Leganto data that the analysts can provide your institution so that you can make good strategic decisions about um, using these uh, tools then the next thing I'll show you is th what I'm calling three key analytics dashboards that have been pre-designed to show you some of the important Leganto data so that you don't have to create these reports yourself in the analytics tool. The next four sessions are about different kinds of key strategic efforts at your institution and how Leganto analytics can help analyze them and move forward. First, checking on your library workflows to see if any improvements can be made. Next, measuring the adoption and usage of Leganto. And then thinking about ways to leverage Leganto data to provide additional support to teaching and learning. And finally, how Leganto data can be used to show your support for other strategic priorities at your institution. And then we'll finish up with some further resources for um, more documentation and training and so forth. As a reminder, if you have questions throughout this session, feel free to ask them right at the time. You don't need to wait till the end. Just use that WebEx chat system and send your questions to all panelists so that both Jesse and I can see it. Um, by the way, that chat, there's already a message in there. Jesse just put one in saying, uh, giving a link to the place where you would have registered for this session and that has all the recordings and slides and things like that. So if you just uh, click on that now in the ch WebEx chat, uh, that should pop open your browser and you'll be ready for when the session is over. Let's start then with our first topic, an overview of Leganto Analytics. And I wanna show you some of the overall concepts for today and start thinking about some strategies uh, for analyzing Leganto at your institution. Uh, before we get too far into it, there are a couple things that are good to know about today's session. First of all, I'm assuming that you already understand Alma Analytics and that you have the user roles for design analytics or analytics administrator. If you don't have one of those roles, or more importantly, if you aren't familiar with Alma Analytics, there are other training sessions to help you learn about analytics, and so I'm not going to cover that today. You won't be totally lost if you don't know much about analytics. Um, I just won't be giving you all the background to help with that. Um, once you're finished with today's session, go in and check out those, those other classes on analytics, and then you'll be able to apply what you've learned in today's session. So instead, I'm going to be talking about strategies for doing research on how your institution uses Leganto. I'm not talking about how to edit these analytics reports in detail. Again, that's the same as editing any other analytics reports that you might have used, and so we won't dig too far into that. 
I want to take um, spend my time and your time talking specifically about Leganto and the analytics. Uh, we also will be using reports and dashboards created by other institutions that use Leganto. I won't be showing you how to create your own. And we won't be looking at the reports that are made by Ex Libra staff members, which we sometimes call out of the box reports. Those are good. There are some good ones that you can create yourself. There are some great ones that are made by other Ex Libra staff. Uh, but the really good stuff that's for Leganto right now is the stuff that's been made by other institutions that have been using Leganto for years. But to help you better understand how all these analytics reports were created by other folks, I do want to briefly talk about what you will want to know when you are ready to create your own Leganto analytics reports and dashboards. And that involves the subject areas. And all, all of Alma Analytics is built on these various subject areas. And so the ones that are specifically related to, related to Leganto are course reserves, Leganto student usage, and Leganto instructor usage events. So I'm gonna tell you what kind of data you can get out of these subject areas. Again, I'm not gonna show you building reports with them, but this is, the, this is the subject areas that were used to build the reports that I'm showing you so that you have a sense of what kind of data analytics can pull out of your Alma service. So the course reserves area can bring you data about courses, reading lists, and citations and can help you answer questions like, which books are included in courses in Leganto? How many citations do instructors add per reading list? How many citations are there per material type, like electronic or print or whatever? How many reading lists have been published this term? What are instructors naming the different sections of their reading lists? How old are the books that are on the active reading lists? The next subject area that is available for Leganto research is the Leganto student usage subject area. And that can bring you data about how students use those courses and reading lists and citations. And can help you add, answer questions like, which courses have the most heavily used reading lists? Which citations are students using the most? Which material types do students use most? Do they really love electronics or are they devoted to going into the library and pulling the books uh, out of the reading list, out of the shelf, reading shelf? I should point out that this subject area, the student usage subject area, the data that comes out of these only is data about the courses and reading lists and citations that actually have usage. If there's no usage for a particular citation, for example, that citation won't even show up in the data from this subject area. You have to use the previous subject area we we're talking about, the course reserves subject area, for a complete list of the citations that exist on all reading lists, no matter what the usage. So this one is specific to usage. And then the third subject area, the Leganto instructor usage events subject area, can bring you data about how instructors use Leganto, including which instructors are using Leganto, as well as the actions that they take. And this data can help you answer questions like, which instructors add tags to the different resources? How many notes for the library were added in the past month? Do instructors delete citations after the course begins? As I said, I'm not going into detail on how to use these subject areas to create your own reports because there's already some great reports created by other folks and that's where we spend our time today. But hopefully this gives you a sense of what kind of data can get pulled out of uh, Alma and through the analytics tool. So now let's look at a couple of high level concepts you can consider that Leganto Analytics will be able to support. So first, how you can use Leganto Analytics to maximize your library's impact. This is some Leganto, something Leganto helps with anyway. It helps you and the library make that connection between teaching and learning. It's a bridge between the library and the courses and the instructors. But you can use these tools, these analytics tools, to answer questions like, how does the library collection align with teaching and learning needs? How can the library support more instructors and courses and students? How can instructors create more engaging resource lists and more? Analytics reports can be used internally with other library staff members to provide better service to instructors and students. For instance, are there specific titles that need to be purchased? Are there gaps in the library collection? 
different files that are missing and so forth. When you're targeting your outreach expert efforts, which departments are making heavy use of this library collection and which are not? We'll talk more about all of these in a few minutes. The second concept that I want to talk about that these analytics tools can assist you is to demonstrate your library's value to other folks. Of course, your staff may hear about this directly from students and instructors about how the library helps them and it's so valuable at your institution and you know how that goes. But more and more, the expectation is that you'll be able to provide data demonstrating the library's value. The numbers are what some people need to see. <laughs> data that shows what is the impact of the library collection and services and how does the library contribute to the institution's goals. Reports that you create in analytics can not only be shared with folks who use Alma and are in the library staff, but they can be shared externally with other departments, with library stakeholders, with institutional research, and so on. What is the library's reach? Why does it matter that there's a library? How does Leganto affect student success and learning affordability and things like that? All of these we'll also be talking about in today's session. I do want to propose one kind of key tip. I'll, I'll bring a few tips in along the way, and this is the tip for this section. When you're reporting from a strategic perspective, it's sometimes helpful to reframe the questions in ways that are more helpful or more actionable. For example, I might originally have this question in my mind, how many students used Leganto last year? And that's something that Leganto analytics can very easily provide. But there might be some other more strategic ways of to asking this question that might be more useful to other folks outside of the library staff, like what percentage of students used library resource lists in their courses last year? Or what percentage of students used library resources uh, uh, in, or the first one was for a resource lists, I misspoke. Which one, how many percentage of uh, students uses resource lists? What percentage of students use library resources in their courses? How many students are impacted by these library resources in their classroom? So hopefully you can see that reframing these questions can help turn it into something that really promotes the impact of the library. And again, throughout today's sessions, I'll come up with more strategic ways of thinking about analytics and ways for reframing your questions to be more productive and actionable. That's my overview. Let's see the three key dashboards in analytics that contain really excellent Leganto data. Uh, and I'm going to be, once I show you these very briefly, I'll be using them throughout the rest of the session to um, show you how they can address certain questions or certain strategic ideas that you're going to make. Uh, you'll find these dashboards in the Alma Analytics System, which sometimes called this the Oracle Analytics System because it's hosted by the uh, company called Oracle. And you look in the catalog of uh, analytics, and specifically in there, you're going to look in shared folders. And within that is the thing called the community folder. And within that is the reports folder. And with that is the share folder, uh, sh shared reports folder. So here is all that. Again, I hope you don't have to write that down. Just grab this uh, PowerPoint presentation, the slide presentation, and then you'll see where to go. And you'll dig down in the catalog folders to shared reports right here. I do have one very important thing to mention to you about this about getting reports from the community folder here. Uh, and that reminds me, I need to make my mouse a little bigger because it's kind of hard to see. I uh, apologize for not doing that in advance. Just get this real quick. Uh, the, the one thing I want to remind you about for this shared reports, anything in the community folder, you if you make edits to any dashboard or report in the community folder and then you save it without changing the location of the report, it saves it for everyone. It changes it for everyone, in other words. Um, that is different than the reports you will find in the Alma folder, which is the, the what we call the out-of-the-box reports that are available to uh, made by Ex Libra staff. Those are locked. They, you cannot write over them. So if you're going to change them, you automatically have to save them to someplace else. You can save them to the My Folders folder, which is your personal folder in analytics, or you can save them to your institution folder, which will be somewhere else on this list. This is the Ex Libris University Consortium, because that's the name of our made up pretend library here that we're demonstrating, but uh, yours would be named something with, with your institution. That's also true. That's what you should do 
for any reports you get out of this folder, the, um, the community folder, if you want to make some changes to it, save it to your institution folder or save it to your my folder folder <laughs> so that um, you can make those changes and not affect anybody else's experience around the world who uses these reports. Okay. The first dashboard that I want to show you is called the Leganto Library and Analytics Dashboard. And here it is. To f I'll show you where to get it in just a second. It was created uh, several years ago in 2019 based on the results of a Leganto focus group that was tasked with determining the needs of the community. So they talked to lots of different Leganto institutions and gathered user stories about the types of things that different institutions around the world needed to get data on. And they used those stories to build out this dashboard. Um, to make it simpler for the rest of the day, I'm going to call this key dashboard number one, the first of our three key dashboards. And to get to it, you go to this path in red across the top, the shared reports, the Leganto Library and Analytics Dashboard Focus Group, and that's right here. And then within that is Leganto Library and Analytics Dashboard. And then you pick the one called 2019. Uh, again, it'll be easier to find this if you grab this PowerPoint presentation later. This is a screenshot from one of the reports that is part of this dashboard. Uh, there are 10 different dashboard, excuse me, 10 different reports that are built out of this dashboard. And I won't show all of them at the moment, but this one we're looking at is called course and list overview. And it has the count of reading lists by reading list status. That's this pie chart right here. So you can quickly see how many are complete, how many reading lists are complete, how many are writing for processing, how many are being prepared and so forth. Quick uh, visual representation of that. Uh, down below is a prompted report for seeing the number of uploaded files per reading list and so on. It's just one of a bunch of reports on this one page on a bunch of pages, 10 different pages on the dashboard. And we'll see some more of these later as we dig into some of these strategic efforts that we're working on. The second dashboard we're going to use today is called the Librarian Usage Dashboard, and I'll be calling it the key dashboard number two for the rest of this session. This was originally developed by Ex Libra staff to demonstrate Leganto so that uh, potential clients, potential libraries could help, could understand the types of information Leganto can provide, and it would help those institutions make a decision about whether they wanted to purchase Leganto. Most of you folks have already purchased Leganto. So it's nonetheless, it's a great collection of reports that gets you thinking about analytics for Leganto. Like dashboard number one, this is also in the community folder. So again, you gonna need to copy this dashboard over to your institution folder or maybe even your personal folder before you start manipulating it. This dashboard also has many different reports on several different pages. I took this screenshot from the first page, which shows the status for the current term. It's showing how many courses that have reading lists that are completed and how many still have in another state. It has a table on the side that shows specific courses with incomplete reading lists and so forth. The third key dashboard for today isn't really a dashboard. It's actually a particular folder with a bunch of excellent reports. The folder is called the Leganto Course Reading Lists. And here are the different reports that you can find there, including uh, one that we were just digging through. You will especially want to look at the subfolder called Instructor Usage. Their reports are, will tell you which instructors are using Leganto, which departments are using Leganto, which instructors are actually creating lists and citations versus which lists are created by library staff. So for consistency, I'm going to call this key dashboard number three when I refer to it later in the session, but I hope you remember that this really, this folder filled with lots of reading lists, uh, excuse me, lots of reports and analytics uh, that have the key reports that we're going to be talking about. This is one of those. This is how many instructors create lists or add citations each year. Uh, so it's just a neat way to see the activity progressing through the years. By the way, you might notice some of the data in here. If you if you pay strict attention to the data, it won't make much sense because it's fake data. Again, these screenshots are from our 
training environment where we put in lots of different fake data. It's not actual real instructors and real students and courses and so forth. So uh, nonetheless, I can I can always show you how it works. And then when you get your own data, you'll, you'll make make some reality because it, it will be real data. All right, here's a tip I have for this section. Please share this with other folks. If you have the design analytics role, or the analytics administrator role in Alma, you may already know that you can make these reports and dashboards accessible to other library staff at your institution using the analytics menu right built into Alma where they would see the reports uh, on a list when they pop up the analytics. But don't forget, you can share reports with other folks in your institution who are outside the library and therefore probably don't use Alma. For example, you could use a scheduled report to send key data by email to instructors and administrators on a regular basis. And if you do eventually modify or create your own reports and dashboards that you find really useful, feel free to share them with other folks in that community folder in the catalog so that other Leganto Analytics folks throughout the world can use it. Uh, just a reminder about privacy of your data in case you're not familiar with this. Other institutions who use your shared reports won't see the actual usage data from your institution. They'll just see the report template, but their own Alma data. And that's the same with all analytics reports. And so if you're very experienced with Alma analytics, you probably already know this, but for those of you who maybe are new to the concept, I just wanted to put your mind at ease that that's one of the reasons I can show you the samples from my pretend analytics from my pretend institution, but you'll go to the same place and open up the same report and you won't see that pretend data. You'll see your real analytics data from your Alma service. And that's true for all of these reports, even the ones made by other institutions throughout the world. You won't get to see their data, they won't get to see yours. All right, that's all my preliminary information. <laughs> so now we can finally dig into some of these, these four key strategic efforts that Leganto analysts can help at your institution. But first, check on your library workflows to see if any improvements can be made. A good way to think about this, especially when talking to folks outside your library, is that Leganto Analytics can support your efforts to provide access to course materials. Well, no kidding, but let's see what that really means. One way is to streamline your processing work. So most of your workflows that you'll be doing in Leganto are available, accessible from inside Alma and from inside Leganto. Uh, the task lists are designed to point you to the resources that require your attention, but sometimes there's other kinds of data that's easier to get from analytics. For example, you can quickly find out which physical items are on reading lists so that you can set those aside or purchase more copies or things like that. You can check on citations for online resources that may be linked to a very particular source because maybe you know that that source has some challenges with uh, linking resolution or maybe you know that the links are actually broken and so you can help the instructors find alternatives by again by searching for citations that have a very specific uh, URL for instance and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. You could also use analytics to quickly detect whether any citations in the first one or two sections of a reading list are incomplete. And then you can discuss with the instructors to get those fixed, to get those complete, so that at least those first couple of sections are ready when the new course term begins. You could also use the dashboards and reports to show your other departments and the administration how your efforts to support courses are going. Some of this information is available in Alma. You may have been able to get it from Alma, and that's great. But sometimes it's easier to find them in an analytics report, and also reports can be shared outside of the library with folks who don't have access to Alma. So let's take a look at some of these reports in the analytics that help supplement your library's workflows. Here is a report making it possible to identify physical items that are on reading lists. For example, in the last couple of years during the pandemic, when many institutions weren't allowing students to come to the library in person, you could use this report to find the resources that might need to switch to electronic resources so they could be accessed from off campus. Or you might use this as a, a quick way to see which physical items need to be purchased in more copies. Instead of looking list by list by list, you get the all of them in one report. Uh, of course, you might look at these items from within Leganto or Alma, right when you're processing the reading list, that's great. This just gives you the holistic view. 
You can modify this report to identify resources that meet certain requirements. They're on certain libraries or certain uh, locations, and that's sometimes harder than doing it uh, in Alma itself. This report is one of those that's available in that folder of reports that I'm calling key dashboard number three, the Legonto course reading lists. And the report specifically is called down at the bottom in red, Ex Libris Physical Items on Reading Lists. That's the name of the report uh, when you go to that key dashboard area in the catalog. If you wanna find all the citations they have an online URL link to a specific provider, you can use this report. It's also in that key dashboard number three. And in that folder, the report is called source URL starts with content store. That's a specific look as a specific uh, provider. Uh, and you can see that in the filters here, how that's built in to show that in this report. But you can use this for any particular vendor or, uh, by putting in the URLs, uh, the, the leading URLs, the, the base the base URLs there, uh, for uh, any time that you find you want to find citations that maybe are challenging to get linking to, or um, maybe something more basic where you have migrated citations that you had files for internal resources. You had your own files that had been stored on one server and they moved to another server and you need to catch them all. This would be the great report to use that to pull that up so that your team can get ahead of the issues, get ahead of any broken links that your instructors and students might find and so forth. Here's another good report. This one is also in key dashboard number three, and it's called uh, at the bottom. It's the actual report title in the catalog is items in the first two sections, which are not complete active courses. And as that name implies, it's a quick way to find any reading list where the initial couple of sections aren't complete and therefore they aren't ready for the first day of the course. If, you're, if your institution, if your instructors have reading lists where the sections are organized by the weeks of the course, then the first couple of sections will be the first couple of weeks of the course. And this way you're just seeing the citations for the first two weeks of the class. And that way you can get those quickly taken care of so that you don't have to look at everything for the entire, uh, our entire academic term, just get them done quickly. On the other hand, if your instructors organize their sections of their reading list into things like required readings, optional readings, extra readings, whatever they call it, that way you'll get your required readings, right? You'll get the required readings uh, tested, checked, uh, fulfilled by the by the library staff so that the when the class starts, um, they're all set to go. And then later, once you're past the initial rush of the new academic term, then you can run a report that shows all citations that are not complete. So these are some of the ways that Alma Anal uh, Leganto Analytics in uh, here can help the workflows you're already doing like checking citations. But you could also use these reports to show your efforts to support courses and course materials. This report comes from key dashboard number two. Reports on this dashboard can help you answer questions like, what percentage of course materials are covered by the library's collections? How many reading lists were completed by day one of the term? How many items did the library purchase for these courses? This is all giving you numbers, statistics, real data behind the work that you and the library staff are doing to support the instructors and students. Okay, take a breath. The next few reports can help you analyze how well those instructors are adopting Leganto and how much the students are using. In other words, we'll see how you can leverage usage data to share your library's impact. You can think about how you can use the data to expand your reach. But again, thinking about how these reports and analytics help you talk about Leganto and the library in a very strategic and concrete way. Here's a report. This one comes from key dashboard number two, and you can use this report to see what is your library's reach with Leganto. For example, how many active courses and reading lists do you have? How many active students use Leganto? How many unique instructors use Leganto? How many citations does the library support? The results you get out of this is just numbers, but what numbers mean is the impact of the library and the resources. How has your library expanded its reach over time? 
Generally, you're going to want to compare from one year to the next rather than from one academic term to the next. There's also the option to filter by academic year, which is based on your country. This report comes from key dashboard number two, and it shows and can answer questions like how many courses, reading lists, students, assigned citations, does the library support year over year? And you can use these reports to analyze impact and potential impact, figure out what growth is not happening on its own and develop a growth plan. When you plan your outreach effort to try to get more instructors to use Leganto, use analytics reports to help target your work. For example, this report comes from key dashboard number two, and it shows reading lists by academic department. So you can see which departments use Leganto. More interesting and pertinent, though, will be figuring out which departments are not using Leganto. Uh, again, these pie charts that I'm showing you, they're from the fake data in our fake training library. But for example, there's no usage from anything like the English department or any hard science departments. Um, that's because it's fake data. But if you saw something like that at your institution, that's some good information for putting efforts over the next term to make contact with those departments and find out how can you help them get started using Leganto. This report is also on key dashboard number two, and it shows how many instructors from each department used Leganto over the last few years. So you can see progression through time. Again, it's fake data, but for example, what happened in 2021 here in the history department? <laughs> they went from more than 50 instructors using Leganto to uh, just a little over a dozen. Let's go check with that department. On the other hand, it looks like sociology is just nicely growing every year. So maybe that's OK, unless you happen to know that sociology has 100 instructors and only 18 of them are using Leganto. Well, that might tell you some information, too. Uh, I did see a message come through that uh, someone came in late and they're wondering where to find these dashboards. Uh, the, the quickest way to explain it is you're going to want to go to the page on the Knowledge Center where you registered for this session and download this presentation that we're looking at because at the very beginning it shows how to find the reports in your Alma Analytics tool. All right, the third strategic effort that I want to show you is to do how to use Leganto data to provide additional support and value to teaching and learning. Again, you can already get a lot of this through Leganto itself, but with something like key dashboard number one, you can get reports on departmental trends. An individual instructor can see information about the usage of their resources on their list, but they can't get the overview or the department wide information. You can using analytics. You can filter by academic department. You can sort by usage type. You can ask questions like how many students or courses or reading lists exist per academic department. If departments at your institution are somewhat competitive, you can let them know how their usage compares to other departments, which resources have the highest usage within the department. You could even point out that the resources that are used in more than one reading list or in more than one course. Again, this is information that instructors in departments can't get for themselves because they can only look at one instructor or one course at a time. Through analytics and through uh, regular reports, you could send them to department heads or things like that to let them keep be aware of this kind of thing. You can also leverage this usage data to provide guidance to those departments. For example, take a critical look at what a high usage list looks like. Which which lists get the most usage? Does the order of the citations seem to matter? Do tags or public notes or due dates result in more usage? Do students seem to use certain resource types like videos more than articles? Are newer items used more frequently than older items? What are the trends that get students to use the resources? Certainly, there are lots of other factors that affect usage, like if the instructor really pushes the reading list during the course. But again, you can look for trends across, across you know, dozens of courses, hundreds of reading lists, and then you have real data to bring to the instructors to recommend changes to how they build their lists, like adding notes or tags or due dates, changing the order of content and so on. And there's a couple of analytics reports you can use to find out what works at your institution. Here are two more reports. 
These are from key dashboard number one. On the left, you can see which citations had high usage. On the right, you can see reading lists with high usage. These are great ways to get you started looking at this kind of data. And you can see the kind of information that's in here uh, by some material type or tags, uh, the reading list score, which we talked about in some earlier sessions. Is it associated with a course or not? Things like that. The last strategic area that I want to talk about has to do with how the analytics in Leganto supports your institution's major strategic priorities. So first of all, you need to identify the strategic priorities of your library or your institution. How is your library contributing to those? Can Leganto help your library contribute? Can Leganto give you data to help your library contribute? So here are some examples of some institutions that have uh, let us know about things they're working on. For example, you can use this tool to show how your, your library provides cost savings. By leveraging usage data and enrollment information combined with cost information to answer some very specific strategic questions. For instance, you can demonstrate how much the library collection potentially saves students. If the student had to buy the item on their own compared to the library providing the resource, what is the impact of that? You probably won't be surprised to hear that when some libraries have done this, the numbers add up pretty quickly because there's so many students using the resources. You can also demonstrate to instructors how the cost of their course materials to promote, what, what is the cost of their course materials to promote the need for more affordable resources? Maybe discussing with instructors the value to their students of putting library materials on the reading list so the students don't have to purchase the materials. And if student affordability isn't something that you need to document, you can at least demonstrate the impact of the library collections budget, showing how the library spends this amount of money, provides these resources to that many courses and that many students. This all gives you the opportunity to talk about the work of the library from a different perspective. Talk about it using language that resonates with those folks at your institution who may not really understand this kind of work. So here's a report from the folder that I'm calling key dashboard number three, excuse me, key dashboard number three. This is the student savings and potential student savings measures. The blue bars on here are the student savings and it's based on the number of different students using items on the reading list and how much it would cost for the students to buy them. The green bars, the potential student savings is the same, but it's based on the total number of students enrolled in the course who could be using the resources on the reading list. Another big priority at many institutions around the world is the idea of student success, trying to predict student success. Many libraries are working on this and you can get a lot of data from Leganto that aligns with this. Some of the things we've already talked about, you provide resources on day one so that as soon as the course starts, students can start reading some of the citations on the reading list. Maybe it's just a matter of framing the data in terms that align with what your goals are. But I did want to talk about some other things that we at Ex Libris and some other libraries are working on in this area. We did a study with Curtin University in Australia a few years ago. They have a prediction model to try and predict whether students will stay in school or will drop out. They want to know what causes potential students to drop out so they can intervene and help the students succeed. Ex Libris worked with them to include Leganto usage data. Or to put it another way, the data about how students use the course materials and put that into the prediction model. And they found, the, the university found, that including information about usage of course materials made the prediction model 17% more accurate. Now, I, I don't know the specifics of this. I'm assuming it's something like if the students are more likely to use the the, to read the citations, that increases the chances that they, they stick with the, the course and therefore with the university. But you can read more about that at, the, at this report, and I'll provide a link to that at the end of today's session. But um, hopefully this gives you some sense, some ideas about how you can add this kind of information in ways that you may not have realized. Since then, we've been working on some additional projects with other institutions to look at ways to leverage Leganto data for institutional learning analytics projects. All right, that brings us to what you can do next. Once you have all this data, once you've thought about how to pull together these reports, the last step is sharing the story. 
sharing the story of what your library is doing to support the institution, to support the students, to support the instructors, and sharing that message very broadly with other library staff, with other departments, both the ones you work with already and the departments you don't currently work with, leaders, administration, and with libraries at other institutions throughout the world. As you are sharing the message, think about the language that you're using, making sure it's appropriate for your audience. The way that you talk about this with your library staff members may be different than the way you talk about with institutional leaders. Share it in a way that really resonates with the particular groups you're talking with. Reframing questions, things like that. And share it in as many different ways as you can. Go beyond the annual reports to the institution. Connect with those departments, with faculty directly, with students directly, to show them that you really can make a difference and uh, helpful using the data. Once you have the data, think about the most meaningful way to express it by reframing the question. This is really a summary of a lot of what we talked about today, but I wanted to bring it together in just a single page. For example, instead of reporting which departments have Leganto lists, when you're talking to departments that don't use Leganto, they might not even know what that is. So you might instead want to talk about which departments leverage library resources in the classroom. How does the library support those departments. You could just report how many courses and reading lists exist, but maybe you could emphasize how the number of courses the library supports has been increasing year over year. Questions like how many active students used Leganto last year, you may lose the audience again who doesn't know about Leganto. Instead, you might say what percentage of students used the library resources in their courses last year. Same with the number of instructors. Again, this way of thinking about your audience and the data, you're pulling out of Leganto analytics. Next, um, I'm going to move to a demonstration in my internet browser, just to show you several of those key dashboards that I've been telling you about. Um, and so for if you uh, are the person who just arrived late, or if anyone else is on the call and didn't catch this, I'll show you how to get there. Uh, but again, downloading these slides here using the link that's um, available. There's a, uh, Jesse has public put in the chat more information about how Leganto helps your library support student success. So that's a great place to look. I'm going to switch over here to Alma, where I'm going to dig into the analytics. So I need to open up the analytics menu here and then go into design analytics. And again, this opens up our Oracle business analytics tool on the My Dashboard. But I'm going to go straight to the catalog up here. And the place where this stuff that we're talking about, Leganto stuff, is located, sorry about that, uh, is here. Let me close this up just to make it easier to start with. We're looking over here on the folders on the left side. My folders, that's where I'm going to save my own personal uh, analytics reports. But if we look in shared folders, again, Alma has the out of the box designed by Ex Libra staff, but we're going to the community folder. Within there is the reports folder. Within there is the shared reports folder. And within there is the Leganto Librarian Analytics dashboard way down here, the focus group. And within that is the Leganto Librarian Analytics dashboard 2019. That's uh, what I was calling dashboard number one throughout today's session. So let's just open that up and see what's there today. Uh, this is the welcome page. It's a very nice introduction to show you what's on the different pages really quickly. Uh, but you can then take, you know, look inside these various reports. Uh, there's like in 10 reports or 10 pages with lots of different reports across the top, uh, like impact analysis. Um, do a quick look here. We've got reading statistics over the last few years. Don't forget this is fake data from our fake university. Uh, over on the right side, we've got details of citations with high usage. That's fun. Just anyway, there's the dashboards are for use by any institution. The information is pretty generic. Some of these reports do have prompts so that you can, you know, look for a particular piece of data by saying, I want to look at a particular, you know, tag or uh, course year or things like that, depending on how they built it. Uh, again, when you're looking at a report on a dashboard, you can click on edit and start changing it. And for those of you who have done work inside the analytics tool here, here's, a, here's you know switching to the criteria tab and making all the changes. But 
I just want to put this warning one more time. The save button in the upper right corner, it does work. If you click on it, it will save it and it will change it for everyone. So before you do that, instead, save as, click the save as button and move the report to either your folder or probably more helpfully into your institution folder so that you can manipulate it and change it and do whatever you need to do to change the filters and the columns and things like that that work for your institution without changing it for anyone else. All right, that's uh, one of the dashboards. Then there's another dashboard over here in the catalog. And this will be dashboard number two was what we were calling it during today's session. So this one is again, the community folder and the reports and then shared reports. And then this time in reports down here and the Ganto course reading lists. Oh, there it is. And we'll open that up to the sample librarian dashboard and open that up to the librarian usage dashboard right there. Again, this is uh, report dashboard number two. And we'll open that up again. We've got six different pages of a number of different reports. Including active courses with reading lists, which are not complete. There it is. And then key dashboard number three, which really was not a dashboard. It's a whole folder of good set of reports is basically where we just were. It's Leganto course reading lists right here. This is what I was calling that dashboard number three. And again, there's lots of different things in here, including the instructor usage one, how many instructors create lists or add citations each year. How much do instructors use Leganto? So hopefully that, again, it can be complicated to find this. That's why I again suggest just grabbing the, the PDF of the slides that I've been showing you to get to this point and then start working in this session. That's basically what I have for you today. Uh, so now's the time to start thinking about some questions and throwing them in the chat while I wrap up today's session. Uh, don't forget, if you need some personal assistance from Ex Libris Clarivate, uh, instead of just kind of this general session that we're teaching today, uh, the first contact is your campus engagement manager. That's the staff person at Ex Libris Clarivate who supports your outreach to your other, the rest of your institution. Um, how to reach new instructors, how to leverage some of the big initiatives happening on your campus. These folks have resources to share with you. And if you're not sure who is the person at Ex Libris that is your campus engagement manager, let us know either here in the chat uh, or we can file, you can file a support ticket or send an email right here to this address that you see on the screen. You can also contact our premium services team, colleagues of mine in the training department who can work with you for a fee on whatever specific issues you have, maybe helping you configure a, a, an analytics report that really works for you. Um, any kind of customized assistance that you need help with, they're happy to do that. Here are some other documentation that you can go look up about the things we've talked about today. If you try clicking on these links right now on your page, it won't work. But again, grab the presentation from that page where you registered for today's session, and then the links on this page work and take you to the specific pages in the Knowledge Center to read about all these different areas, uh, including those analytic subject areas, much more detail about uh, what exact data each of these subject areas pull in. and that university, the Curtin University report I was telling you about, here's the link to that report so you can read that report in detail. Because I had to just kind of skim over it for, for time here. I would like to especially point out this brand new page in the Ex Libris Knowledge Center called Adoption and Engagement of Leganto. Jesse Ransom, who is my colleague on the call today, created this to provide extra resources specifically to collect ideas and best practices for getting the other departments at your institution to adopt Leganto and to increase engagement. Go there for information. Uh, send us a note from there by clicking on the, you know, the, uh, the link that, if, that says you have a problem with this page, but then just give us a suggestion for things we can add, and then we'll add it to this page to help other institutions 
There are a couple of other training videos that might help you out. The first one called Leganto Analytics goes into more detail about those three Leganto Analytics subject areas that I mentioned at the beginning of the session, the course reserves, Leganto student usage and Leganto instructor usage events. So these videos talk about the things that you can use the subject areas for, the data that's in them, how to work with them. And if so, if you're interested in making your own Leganto analytics reports or modifying other people's reports, I would encourage you to watch that training. If you're new to Alma analytics in general, start with this training, the Alma analytics training. It's an excellent introduction to the tool. It's available to all institutions, not just for Leganto, but for all of Alma and your discovery service. Uh, it will show you how to create reports and dashboards, create widgets so that other staff members in your library can put an analytics report right on their homepage of Alma, how to schedule reports to publish, again, by email to send them to anyone, and how to customize the default out-of-the-box reports that Ex Libre staff has created. And that's actually how to customize the, the reports created by other community members of the Leganto universe, so to speak. So that concludes today's session. And that's also the end of this entire Become an Expert series. You can find the recordings of previous sessions in the Ex Libris Knowledge Center. And the recording of today's session will be up there or probably tomorrow sometime. Also, you can download the presentation slides, as I've said far too many times today. That's on this page as well. And that's what I have for you on this subject. So again, if you have any other questions uh, about analytics with Leganto. Now is the time. Jesse and I will stick around for a little bit. I also made the offer at the beginning of the session that if you had leftover questions from previous sessions, from subjects that we talked about over the last few months, now is the time for that as well. If you're done, if you're ready to go, when you close this session, there will be a survey pop up in your browser. Please take a moment to fill that out. Let us know what you thought of this session. We will probably offer this session later in the year and like to make it better for whoever comes then. So anything that you can do to help us improve it would be wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for attending. Thanks for being here and for being in involved, engaged folks. And have a great day.